Okay, uh, what I want to talk about is young, free, and single. How do we get them volunteering? What is it uh, about the lives of young people today, and particularly the rise of people who are single, uh, that we need to understand in order to get them to volunteer? Uh, because we have massive changes uh, in the way that our lives are being lived compared to 10 or 20 or 30 and certainly 50 years ago. Uh, and those changes start with the households that we live in, the kinds of places uh, that we're living in. So when you talk about changing households, what do I mean? Well, what I basically mean is that couples are on the way out. And if you're in a couple, you're not quite an endangered species, but you're getting there. So this here is the number of couples. In 1961, just under 50% of couples of any kind, including children, uh, made up the household population. And now we're going to be, by about two, uh, 2009, we're under just over 20%. Okay? So couples with children are halved in a generation. Couples without children are pretty stable. Now what's really changed is that one-person households, here on the left, are dramatically increasing, and one-person households over pensionable age have increased, but more or less stabilizing. So we're seeing this fundamental shift in society away from households that have couples in them to ones that have one person in them. And there are a whole range of ramifications about that simple change that we see. One of the things that's driving those changes is this chart. And this is the number of marriages. The number of marriages overall, uh, this is going back uh, to 1986, was about 400,000, uh, and then down by 2009, 200,000. So the number of marriages has been pretty much halved. And then the divorce rate is around the 50%. There's the 50%. Uh, it's around the 50%. In other words, if there are 400,000 marriages every year, there are about 200,000 divorces. This one, uh, which I thought for a while was uh, drawn by my three-year-old, uh, but in fact shows life changes. So under here, you've got the married people. So here you are age 15. Virtually nobody's married age 15. More and more people get to be married. Uh, and then marriage declines. But what you also see here is the number of people who are single, not in a relationship. So for today, this lime green is the interesting bit. It's the number of singles. And this is what's increasing. More and more single people in the population. People here who are single but in a relationship, i.e. they're dating somebody, they're not shacked up, and then cohabiting here. More and more cohabitees, more and more singles, and over time, uh, generations were seeing less and less married people. If you're wondering how that matches in with the previous chart, it's because that's over the lifespan rather than a snapshot. What's also happening is the age at which people get married is increasing. So you go back to 1961. Anyone here born 1961 or earlier? Um, yes, fantastic. Uh, just before I was born, uh, you can see people married on average around 25. And now look for men, and now we've increased that to about 30. So what are the changes taking place so far? You've got people getting married later. You've got people living in different kind of households. If you get married later, almost by definition, what you have is more single people uh, in the population. And you can see the bit that's puzzling me is what happened here. <laughs> did, did, did all these women suddenly go, you know what, I've just got to do it. I've got to get in before the 2005 election. Uh, or, or, you know. So there was this bit in about 2002 where suddenly everyone said, quick, get married. Uh, and it isn't matched by the men, so I haven't quite worked out <laughs> who these people were getting married to, because it isn't the men they're marrying. Anyway, that's statistics where you can't always explain everything you see on the chart. This is a rare picture of Justin Davis Smith on his wedding day. Um, you can see he was really going out to town. This kind of formal institution of marriage, uh, although it doesn't look like it from the plethora of wedding magazines, any of you who are big fans, as my daughter is, of the Four Weddings program, where they all go to different people's weddings and they shred them ruthlessly. This kind of traditional wedding uh, uh, approach is certainly in the demise compared to a generation 20, 30 years ago. Uh, and actually, people do get married, but actually they also get remarried and so on. So the, the clarity of our life course is changing. Uh, some key facts for you to remember. Uh, people who are most likely to move out of their parents' house at uh, 24, 25. I'm just going to do a little test here. Uh, anybody here still living with their parents? Yeah? What, can, what age are you? 26. 26? Okay, you're above the average, yeah. Anyone else? 
23 below the average, yeah? 38. Okay, that's good for your parents. Um, <laughs> I'm not quite so sure. As we'll see, actually, it works both ways. Uh, anyone else? Anyone want to advance on age 38 for still living with their parents? But you may not want to admit it, actually. Um, but, so we do live with our parents longer and longer. And one of the reasons we live with our parents longer and longer, I, I don't live with my parents anymore, uh, but uh, it's because financially we don't have a lot of choice. So if you don't want to have your children living with you, what I recommend is you don't live in a city. That's a good place to start. Particularly don't live in London. Uh, I've moved to the Lake District 10 years before I could even think about my children leaving home in order to make sure they couldn't still live with me uh, once they get to university. So if, if you don't want your children to live with you, live with them somewhere where they can't possibly uh, get a job locally. That may not <laughs> That may not always work. So if you live in London, the chances are you've got a big house, uh, uh, then you may have problems. Precisely because um, student debts are increasing, houses are getting more and more expensive. So people uh, who are coming out of university now, have been doing this for the last 10 years, are finding it increasingly different, difficult to settle on their own. Uh, and actually, it is a change that is really going to get worse and worse over the next 20 years. Because as student debts increase, people won't have the capacity to rent. And what we may see is different models. We're seeing some of those, but people buying with four or five friends a house rather than as a couple, because increasingly people aren't saying we're going to be a couple, etc., uh, etc. Et so, uh, more and more single people. Uh, marriage is happening later, but not necessarily babies. A little bit of that we'll see. Divorce is happening later. Divorce rate is still high, but marriage numbers are dropping. So what you need to imagine is that this notion that we're full of married couples and so on and so on, uh, as a society, is uh, decreasing. Now, why is that important? And it's important because when you're a married couple, you have two people contributing to one household, two people paying the bills. Your resilience as a family unit is much higher. If one of you loses the job, the other one may be able to keep going. If you're a single person household, um, what you discover is actually if you lose your job, it's a much more serious situation. You may not be able to pay your mortgage. You may have to rely on benefits of some kind and so on. So single person households are actually far less likely to have the resilience in economic downturns. And that may well be one of the reasons that what we haven't yet seen uh, is volunteering increase uh, as a result of the recession. Because actually it's created people whose lives are already much less resilient, uh, actually it pushes them into a situation where they have to take far more drastic measures, sell the house and so on. So single people households are not necessarily good for volunteering.